Well, we are talking about national politics this morning with our political analyst, Tom Serafin. We've got to first start with the Supreme Court overturning the McCain-Feingold Act. Which party do you think will benefit most as a result of this? Well, short term, probably the Democratic Party, because the unions now can get into this thing quickly. They have the apparatus, the organization intact. They can go in and you really use this law uh, to their benefit. But over the long run, I mean, it's going to balance out between corporates, corporations and, the, and their PACs and, and the unions. But you have to take a look at it. Corporations don't really want to get into these things because they divide their constituency and divide their customers. So, you, you know, if you're a, a selling tires and you're going to supporting a Republican in a Democratic state, People may say, I'm not going to buy your tires. Ah. So associations and other kinds of groups will be if, uh, impacted. How I think this, it was the right decision. Yeah, but how will this further corrupt the election process? Because that's what a lot of people are saying is going to happen now. Well, it won't. A lot of people say, well, I have to keep money from somebody. Millionaires can run for office right now and spend all they want. I mean, what, what the law is saying is the freedom of speech is so important, it shouldn't be hinged on whether this mm -hmm. guy can do this or that guy can do that. Uh, freedom of speech meant, the First Amendment meant political right of speech. That's why we started this country back in the 1700s. I mean, that's why people came here from England, to get away from that kind of activity. Right. You were talking so. to millionaires as opposed to unions, and, and unions don't have the millions of dollars that an individual might have. Well, they have huge money. They spent $3 million just in the aldermanic elections here in Chicago uh, four years ago. I mean, that's the reason the aldermen are, are paying uh, a lot of heat to what the unions are saying today, mm -hmm. because they've controlled that process. The business community in Chicago hasn't existed in the political process here on the ground for aldermanic races. Maybe this might help them. I, I don't know. Uh, they, they've got to you know, get their, their act together. They haven't been able to do that. The bottom line is... Uh, transparency. Everybody should be able to give whom, whatever they want to whomever they want as long as it's immediately reported so people can go back and see what they have. Okay. I, don't th I don't think a law restricting this guy from doing this or that guy from doing this uh, it should probably be the case. What about Scott Brown? Obviously, you know, he was in D.C. Uh, yesterday. He's like this rock star almost right now, and you always talk about political capital. So, you know, how much capital does he have right now? Because people talking about maybe him running for president and all this other stuff. You know, realistically, talk about his future in Massachusetts and his capital going forward. Well, you know, he's up for re-election because he's filling out the uh, the term of Ted Kennedy, who passed away. Uh, he's he's going to be up for re-election in 2012, the same time when Barack Obama is going to be up for re-election. So he can lead by example. He can't run for president. I mean, that's a lot of hyperbole. Okay. But he's not going to do anything like that. He can lead by example. On election night, he did not mention the Republican Party once. It was always about hearing the independent voice for this people's seat. Uh, the Republican Party has to understand and learn from his candidacy how they can be effective in 2010 November and in 2012. The bottom line with uh, this gentleman is that he can help lead and teach the Republicans how they can bring the party back towards the center. And I think Mr. Obama uh, could also learn something about moving back towards the center. Mm. And going after the banks yesterday, I think, is the beginning of that. Okay, well, what about health care, though? You know, that, that's the big issue. Everyone's talking about, you know, the Dems losing the supermajority. What do you see as the future of this health care bill? Corey, I think the president could win big if he dismantled that health care bill and went in pieces. Can you imagine if he, he all of a sudden, they introduced legislation that you, all of a sudden portability would be passed? What are the Republicans going to do about not being able to take your health care insurance with you from job to job? They have to vote with you on that one. How about pre-existing conditions? Happens to all my friends all the time. They lose health care because they had a pre-existing condition. What if they pass that bill two weeks later? What are the Republicans going to do? Say no to that? If he took this bill and dismantled it and spent time on yeah, but parts, Republicans they are could for, be very successful. But Republicans are for all that. It's the other junk in the thing that Republicans are against. It's the other 2,000 pages they don't agree with. So why did the Democrats in the very beginning just take a piece by piece like this? Because the Democrats had a, a, a large appetite. They thought the world was with them, and they thought we well, could do anything at any time. Remember what Rahm said uh, in November before they took office in January. You know, you, you have to take advantage of the good crisis. So they piled everything into this first year. The TARP money, all these things were on on the table and he was right they needed to pass this thing before Christmas because as things waned and as was, things were delayed, all of a sudden this Massachusetts election came in and, th and the thing is dead the way it is today. But they could right this ship and they could begin to take advantage of the opportunity of pieces. How will Scott Brown's race affect the race here for Illinois Senator? Well, I think Mark Kirk is in a preeminent position no matter who wins the Democratic primary. I mean, Mark is, you know, kind of riding a wave. This is a Democratic state. This is a blue state. But the momentum nationally is with him right now. And whoever comes out of that Democratic primary is going to be looking up and is going to be the underdog. Tom Serafin, always good to see you. Thanks yeah. for coming yeah. in. Thank you. Thank you.